Hey, listen up. Everyone Loves Guitar listeners can now get 20% off all merchandise at guitarmerch.com. Just enter the discount code VIDEO in your shopping cart and enjoy. Get your Everyone Loves Guitar t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs, as well as other cool music and guitar t-shirts. Just enter VIDEO as your discount code for 20% off at guitarmerch.com. Hey, everybody. This is Craig Garber. Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar. And uh, we've got a great guest today with Peter Woods. And... Uh, uh, this Thanks is a for cool having me. Story. Oh, my pleasure. I want to thank uh, Randy Haker for connecting us. Yeah, that, he's been great about this uh, promoting. Awesome. Things. Awesome. Yeah, yeah he's really easy to deal yeah. with. So uh, before I tell you Peter's bio, let me just show you this record. Uh, in 1981, maybe 82, probably 81, though, I was down in this place here called Sounds in the East Village in New York City. It's on St. Mark's Place. that actually just closed, I think, in 2015. It was the, I think it was the last remaining store. And I actually went for a job interview here one time. But anyway, and I bought this record. I heard it playing. Right. It, and oh, it's uh, playing in the store at the time. Yeah. And I wow. was like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. And then all of a sudden after that, it must have been early because the record was just released. Because after that, I, I started hearing it everywhere all the time. All yeah, the radio, every, you know, it was er, yeah. early in the day where we had radio stations playing all kind of music. This was a great alt sing, alternate, ro alternative rock mm. single. That's what he's called it back then. I don't know what you call this now, this kind of music, but it's awesome. And uh, everything about this record was great you know especially the, the main track never say never it was uh, we were really it, pleased with what how that came out because we'd never been in a great studio before right oh okay. this, is, this is synchro sound at uh, it's rick okasic's studio right mm -hmm. right so all of those cars records are recorded there right and yes we were just when we heard the playbacks we were just like oh my god because right? of the quality of the studio. Yeah, and the, and the engineering, right? They had uh, yeah. Roy Thomas Baker's engineer. Right? Oh, the, the queen, crap. The, he's, their, he's their producer, right? Right, so, right. So it's like we had this huge sound and just, it was amazing. So when that EP came out, it was like a really big step. That's well, a great record, man, and the music not is that cool. The first one was bad, right? The, uh, you know, David Kahn did the and he did an amazing job, but we didn't have the front money to get. You know that. Yeah, Rick Ocasek and Roy Thomas Baker. Yeah, yeah. Ian Taylor was the engineer. I, I really want to mention him because he was really that was Roy Thomas Baker's engineer. His name is Ian Taylor, and I really want to give him a shout out because, you know, he just made it sound amazing. Well, let me give everybody a quick back now, background to you, and then we'll get started. So Peter is the founding yeah. member, if I if you didn't realize this already, of Well, Romeo you know, Boy. let me clarify that. Can I clarify yeah, that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Really, man. Frank and Deborah were the initial sort of members. And then, so they had written some songs. But they had worked before together. They were in the right. same, they were the Art Institute of San Francisco. And I didn't know Frank at all. But anyway, so they really started this thing. And then one day they called me up, or she called me up and said, uh, I'm doing this thing with a friend of mine. He's a bass player. And we need a guitar player. Would you be interested? And I but said, you okay, guys, sure. You guys yeah. had played together. Deborah and I were in a band together. Yeah, right. They called right. the Mummers and the Poppers. Right, right. I have that, and yeah. And when... And so she knew me from there. I was a guitar player, obviously. And then it broke up, and I wasn't doing anything. I was sort of, I don't know, looking at the sky. <laughs> I was going to school, San Francisco State University, but um, they really sort of founded it. But very quickly, they they needed, you know, a guitar player. Yeah, guitar player. To make sure. a band, obviously. Yeah. So I joined pretty quickly. And then we got a drummer after that. Everybody and then we started goes, playing. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of the, the evolution of it. But they started it. I joined Third Guy. And that's really when these songs became songs, right? Because now you got a bass and a guitar. All right. So, you know, it's a band. Uh, the band was Romeo Void from, and they were originated from San Francisco, as, as as Peter said. They had two hit songs, "Never Say Never," which reached number twenty-seven on the mainstream rock charts. It was this song. It's been in tons of movies. 
it's a great if you don't feel like moving when you hear this song there's something your body's not connected to your brain or something <laughs> uh and it evokes the thing i like about this song in particular is every time you hear it in a soundtrack or anywhere it ev for me anyway maybe it's because i was young at that time it evokes that period of t of time specifically very similar to how like you know steppenwolf's born to be wild mm evokes you know late 1960s you know this song is like very representative of the music and the vibe and the culture going on in the early 80s for me anyway um their other hit was a girl in trouble is a temporary thing another cool song totally different that was a top 40 pop single in 84 uh, both songs were staples on mtv and like i said never say never has been in many soundtracks the band has just released a new out of the archives live from Mabuhai Gardens. That's a really popular place, was a very popular club in San Francisco. Uh, and it's actually their first official live album recorded in November 1980. And uh, with that being said, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. And oh, let's thanks get, for having me. Let, let's let's dig in. Okay. All right. So you began playing acoustic guitar at the age of nine. Your story is yes. so similar to like every I know every play. every guy they every saw guitar Sullivan, player your right? age yes everyone they saw man. Ed Sullivan that Sunday night Monday morning did you <laughs> see that oh my god what the hell was it those guys yeah. look so weird right right but the so music it just hit me right and so a friend of mine you know very quickly a really good friend of mine in the neighborhood um we just started teaching each other guitar, teaching each other guitar and learning songs and singing, right? That was the beginning that, of what my interest in music, right? I wasn't really interested before. I was really young. Elvis, Pre you know, Elvis, Pre I remember my brothers had Elvis Presley singles and stuff. And it, I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But I wasn't listening until that night. It was really literally that night. Suddenly, you know, change wow. your life what is that yeah it really it's yeah. and again like you say it changed so, so many people right especially my generation yes my so age, many and a little and older too but yeah it, it yeah so many people just were mesmerized and decided i want to do that that looks cool <laughs> yeah but um, for me it was the music it was, it was they were cool but it was the music it just hit me just hey, were you, you know, not listening it, was were you not like listening to radio or did you not come from a well i was listening to radio i was nine years old right i'm really oh, young. you're really but young. I, i'm okay. hearing all this stuff and you know they're, oh that's a nice song that's a nice song but i was never really connected to it you know until that just and, hearing and then, that it was just unbelievable yeah you, you but you didn't start playing electric if if the bio I read is right, until you were much older, until you were 24, yeah. and you joined that band with uh, Deborah, the Mummers and right. the Right, that, that's really the first time I played electric. I learned in the band, literally, <laughs> you know, how to do that. It, it, I know it sounds weird. Crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cra What did you, like, it, how did a lot you of just, pressure. You, you just... So, like, you were friends with her, and she said, you want to play guitar? You had played a little bit when you were a kid, and you said, yeah? The, okay. The mummer. Okay, so the no. This is the mummers and the poppers. Yeah, okay, and right. my my friend, my friend from my hometown is a drummer, and he knew these people. I didn't know her. I didn't know any of these people. He he goes to me and goes. He came to me one day and he said, um, "There's this band kind of wants to get together, and they need a guitar player. And I know you don't have an electric guitar, but they have one. You can borrow it." And I said, "Okay." <laughs> So the first so, like, rehearsal was weird. It's like, I don't even know if I can do this, right? And we, we, they were, they were playing like 60s pop and R&B and things like that. We were a cover band, okay? And so, you know, I could play chords, and I'm, I'm a fast learner, right? <laughs> but, like, I, I was lent a guitar from the Avengers, the Avengers, by the way. I, this is a hard punk band. Okay. So because the it's a long story, but I was borrowing the Avengers guitar and I wasn't supposed to. So one day they came in and said, "What are you doing?" And it was like really weird. And then I bought my own guitar. But that first rehearsal, I didn't know what it was going to be like, but it worked out. I just, like played along and I know the chords and 
the rhythms working and I, and I had the sensibility. So I faked through it and I, st they kept me. So, but that's and, how but you started. must've been wood shedding your ass off though at home. My wood shedding was all my playing from nine years old. That was my wood shedding. Okay. Because on, I just on your acoustic. Yeah. But I translated that to acoustic. So it's not that, that different really. If you're playing those kinds of songs, okay? right? Because you're playing chords a lot, so you're really just electrifying uh, an acoustical guitar in a sense. Except it, you can take it farther because you have a lot more uh, sound palette to work with, you know. Sure. So I've quickly learned how to, you know, um, take advantage of that because it's a real dif different ball game, right? You really totally. can explore sound. So. I quickly sort of picked it up and, you know, got better. But, yeah, that was the first time. So you were playing pretty consistently on that acoustic from the time you started picking it up. You, you I never pretty... stopped. Oh, okay. I didn't, okay. I'm I didn't doing it right that. now. I've got two acoustics right here. I do it every day. It's, it's okay. my thing. Yeah. It's, what I, right. it's what I do, right? Yeah, so totally. Never, I always played and sang. But I was playing in clubs in San Francisco, you know, playing in uh, bars and stuff, singing covering songs with a friend of mine we were singing harmony doing you know paul mccart or um simon and garth simon and garth i was just gonna say yeah, and neil Garfunkel, young yeah. and the beatles we just played all these songs so i was gigging in san francisco on my own before i met any of these people but it uh, okay. right okay so i didn't realize that i okay. never stopped yeah it was okay it's just a transition so uh the band evolves into romeo void what were some of the challenges early on as far as getting things moving um, the funny thing about it was it, there weren't many challenges it, because at that time there were so many places to play and so many people asking us, Hey, you got this band? Oh, that's it. This is a real do it yourself time. So many bands formed and there were so many venues. So it wasn't like challenging at all, really. If you just sort of had had your act together, you know, yeah. you, you had songs and you could play and you had enough songs to play a set and you were competent. It wasn't really a problem. So there weren't that many challenges, except, you know, at some point we were a three, you know, three piece in the sound. And we, it was, I'm not a lead player. Okay. Never been, never wanted to. I don't have the, you know, I just, it's not me a thing. I'm a rhythm player. Okay. Yeah. So at some point we, we had to, the sound was not, it was working, but there was, there was this missing element and we were, we're searching for that piece of the puzzle. Right. So that was a challenge at some point we're going, you know, this is okay, but we need something more. But, uh, that Mabuhai live album where Ben, that's like one of the first times Ben ever played with us, okay? Because there, there's recordings very near that time when we were still a three-piece. So this live album is really when he joined. And we were just kind of figuring out how this was going to work. So it's... Um, that's cool. It's interesting. In that, but he was the missing piece of the puzzle. He and when we got him, it was like, oh, yeah. This is this is it. And again, De Deborah knew him, and he, he was he worked at the sandwich shop where she went. And it, we were looking for you know we were trying guitars, we were trying all this stuff, and she goes, oh well, there's this guy who makes sandwiches, and he says he plays the sax, and you know, let's try him. <laughs> so he walks in when walks into a rehearsal, and we start playing our songs, and he starts playing. It's like oh my god, the sandwich guy. <laughs> The he's amazing. Guys. He's so amazing. He, and he's that incredible. I'll tell you a he funny is. story. So uh, yeah. Peter's talking about Ben as Benjamin Bossy was the sax player, yeah. and, he, and he just added such great texture to mm. Ben. Very yeah. interesting story. A guy I met on my show that I've stayed friends with, uh, Doug Bossy, is Ben Bossy's cousin. Is that he's right? A he's a buddy oh. of mine. Yeah, So and he never got to meet him. And Doug oh. is a musician. 
He's a phenomenal guitar player. He's a session player. He has founded uh, wow. a, a, a music Doug library, Blossom. super successful. Yeah. Oh my Tell me, because he never met Ben. So maybe, you know, where did you meet I know him? he, where did, did I meet, I, where did I meet Doug? Yeah. I met Just, Doug on my show. On your show? Yes. Yeah. I met wow. Doug on my show. He, he was living oh in God. LA at the time. He moves to Nashville now. And could, I know he said, he goes, because yeah, I, I sent him them. They look the same. Wow. What does he play? What instrument? D Doug's a guitar player. Phenomenal. And a composer. And he composes uh, records, music scores, uh, film scores. He's Doug incredible. Yeah. I'll we'll have to check and him out. They look the wow. same. They have a very similar look. So I was <laughs> wow. talking to him last week and I said, Doug, I got a question for you. Or I text him. I, I said, are you related to a guy named Benjamin Bossy? And he said, yeah. And he called me up right away. So oh. I want to ask you, to, I, and, and he said, I, I really regret I never met him. I think they were cousins. It was his dad's brother's son. So that would make them, I think that's what he said. It would make them cousins, right? Yes, yes. So he never got I, to meet him. And so. tell, tell, me, tell me a thing or two about Ben, because for Doug, because he always wanted to meet him. And he said, I heard great things about him. And I loved his playing, you know. If he wants to see him play, there's... On YouTube, there's a there's a live show at this. It's a club in Boston called the Spit, right? We we were in Boston a lot because of you know Rick Ocasek's uh, Synchro Sound, okay? And we had a really good following there. So there's a live show. It's it's um, the whole show. It's like an hour and something long. If you want to see awesome. Ben play, just awesome. tell him to watch that. I will. It, it's Thank everything. You. He he was at the top of his game. He was in great spirits. It's that's that's the Ben, yeah, that I awesome. know and love. And if he wants to see what he was like, that's just watch that. I will. I'll tell him that. I watch it all the time just to watch him, remember him. Right. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's man. you know, um, that's the way I want to remember him. That night, it was just, it was a perfect you, night for him. He was amazing. Had the, had the magic going that night. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. So um, if you want to see what it was like, that's it. Yeah. Okay. YouTube, the Spit yeah. Club in Boston. So you mentioned earlier Rick Ocasek from The Cars produced uh, the, this record as well as the album at his Synchro Sound Studios in Boston. How did you get hooked up with Rick and what did he bring to the table that was missing? Okay. So this is a funny story. We were. We did a lot of touring of the U.S., right, after we released our first album, College Towns, right, because college radio was really playing, not not commercial radio. They wouldn't touch it. It was no way. But a lot of college radio. So we did these tours to college towns, right? And so we went to Boston, of course. And we were – this is funny. We were leaving the hotel. This is before – remember, you got to remember the technology at the time. There's no cell phones. None of right. that, right? So right. there, I remember, and I remember well. There was a these hotels had message boxes, right? It's, this is unbelievable, right? Do you you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this, so, you, you, so there's yeah. a box where if somebody calls you and you're not there, there's yeah. not even answering machines, right? Uh, there's uh -huh. nothing, and so if there's a message and you're not there, they put this little piece of paper in your box, right? Right. So I'm. I'm le I'm the last one to kind of walking out of the hotel, I think. And th I think that the desk clerk said, oh, Mr. Woods, um, there's this message for you. I, I go, oh, thank you. And I read it. Rick Ocasek wants to talk with you. Or he left his phone number. He said, call me if you feel like it or something like that, right? And so I went out and go, hey, Rick Ocasek <laughs> called. <laughs> He, do, should I call him back? And they go, yeah, call him back. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that must have been really weird getting that message, right? It was, but it was that sort of happenstance thing, right? So yeah. we, I did call him. We some Maybe I did. somebody, And we met him. We went, to, and he just toured us around his studio. He was the nicest guy. Just lovely guy, right? Uh, and so we, we went, I think we went right then and there before we left Boston, and we Drove over to his studio called Synchro Sound. He just had it built. It's this beautiful, multi-tiered. It's like two floors of studio, right? Uh 
And so he just gave us a tour and talked to us and said, I really like your band. Because one of his roadies had been playing the the tape of our record oh. while they were traveling around. And so he heard it and he goes, oh, that's interesting. So he was interested in us. So we, he toured the studio and at the end of it, he goes, oh, by the way, um, if you want to record a record, you know, oh, you can do it here. And uh, I won't even do it free. <laughs> what? He, wow. For free. He said, I don't want your money. You don't have any money, right? We're, we're broke, right? Right. And he just offered that. What a nice and guy. We're, we're, yeah. Great guy. Holy he smoke. He was just a nice guy. He really some, wanted that's... to help bands. He he cared about that, right? Was, so now, we were he, like, wow. Question for you. Did he, and you don't have to answer it, in lieu of money, did he get points or some percentage for his production? I Honestly, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think he cared. Really? Well, he, wow. He, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I You know, don't quote me Interesting. on that. But, you know, he's a rich guy. He didn't need the money. This is his passion, right? Yeah. It's that like, was really cool of him, though. It was. We were just, you know, dumbfounded. Yeah. So, and we were on this label called 415 at the time, right? And it, right. they don't have any money. They can't afford synchro sound. Right. So when we went back home, we told Howie Klein, who was our le- record label head at the time, we told him, he goes, he, he's offered the studio. It's free. And he's going, okay. <laughs> you know, everybody's, because this is a big step for his record label too. Right. That that turned right. out to be a pivotal point for his record label. For 415. Yeah, because when that, when the, EP finally came out, then all these record labels wanted, you know, were interested. They were interested right? in record and been, and, then, and CBS being Sony on. ultimately became that one. And and he made he's a smart guy and he made a deal for all of his bands on his label to be pulled in. So to he CBS made a really Sony. smart wow. deal. Howie That's Klein. Cool. I don't cool. know if you know him, but No, I don't. He went That's on tour awesome. first from yeah. The big record label. A lot of these guys just took off. David Kahn just went huge, right? That's awesome. Our producer, yeah. So, but yeah, so it was, again, it was almost like an accident. How do you, you know? look at stuff like that? Do you look at uh, stuff like that as like just luck? Do you look at it as some sort of like higher power stuff or universe or something, you know, or just yeah, random? It's a good question. Some... If you're lucky, you, it, you know, people say you make your own luck. I, I kind of believe that. If you're yeah. doing something and you're passionate about it, right, and you're in this yeah. environment and you're pushing it and you have good intentions, maybe, the luck does happen. It Definitely. seemed to happen with us a lot. I mean, just getting from this lousy band <laughs> playing around to making a record. That was very lucky. David Kahn almost didn't do it. He t- he's like, he told me this. Uh, how we cl- do you want to hear the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're playing around, and uh, uh, how we climb wants to make a record with us, but it was only supposed to be a single. So he gets David Kahn to watch one of our shows, and you know, later we he had agreed to do it, but he told me, he goes, I wasn't going to do it. I didn't want to. He says, when I heard you guys live, I didn't want to do it. Except hey, I heard David? this one. Yeah. He said that. The guy's really blunt. He doesn't, he is blunt. Okay. He doesn't BS you. But anyway, he said, I didn't want to do you except I heard this one song and this one song made me want to record you. That's what he said. What song was it? It's called um, "I Mean It," and awesome. it is his. It's it is a. It's his masterpiece on that record. It's a masterpiece. It's that's it's awesome. amazing. But that's so, the he, song. That's a, that is amazing. <laughs> I don't want to record you. You guys are terrible. 
<laughs> oh my god and oh, then i heard was... that one song and i he figured he had something in there that he could work with well the one song that he <laughs> i think he literally wanted to do it for the one song but he he somehow got an album it was only supposed to be a single and then he made a deal with this studio to do a whole album so i guess he sort of changed his perspective on our worth as a band because he we did an album but at the time he said i didn't want to do it that's interesting yeah, it was, it was so fun. you had a lot of things fall into place you're right yeah that, that was that... very lucky right we played yeah. the one song <laughs> that he liked wow so, yeah that that's sort of a lucky incident right and uh and then and the album he the album was released and then there was a lot of like buzz about it right and it was made on nothing no money right but he is really good at arranging and squeezing sounds out so he did a real great job of getting these great arrangements on our songs so uh, again, that was enough. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's say, go back to Rick Okasek for a second. Would the record have been different with a different producer? Like, what did he bring to the table? I'm curious. Yeah. Okay, and I'm, not, so, I'm asking that in a genuine curiosity, not like, oh, yeah. what did he do? I'm I'm curious no, about what he Yeah, had. I see. Um, yeah, so David Kahn has a s sensibility, and he works a song really hard, and he has an idea, and it you know the pieces, it, it's like a puzzle to him. Um, so that, that was, that was done and we were out playing and gigging and writing songs. And when we came, when Rick Cassett got into the picture, we were really more accomplished as musicians and arrangers and had a really good idea of how we wanted to sound. And he didn't interfere at all in that. Okay. And so the, there wasn't a lot of producing going on. There was engineering getting these amazing sounds ian taylor i got again ian taylor yeah. walter turbot is another guy they got this sound so they were really instrumental but they really kind of left us alone as far as composition parts and everything david Kahn was really you know connected to parts and how he wanted to work he was really more involved in the process the, Rick Ocasek wasn't involved that much in the process at all. He let us be us, which is really a great gift because we were we were we were we were just firing on all cylinders at that point. We, we were the songwriting was good, the playing was good. Yeah. We had a sense of a song and how it should sound. So that's the difference. It was really hands off. So it was like a different With band, me. though, at that by the time. Yeah, you we're a better band, it. different band. Yeah. We learned yeah. a hell of a lot, right, yeah. about uh, writing songs and and getting the sounds you want. We when we recorded the first record, what I didn't know anything. Yeah, it's all, your first time in a studio. <laughs> and, and he's like, he's like, who are these guys? He he loved Ben, right, David Conn. He loved Ben, like who doesn't? But Frank and I were just green, right. He's like, what are you doing? Your guitar's out of tune. Ah! It was boot camp. It was <laughs> hell on earth. I, you know, I have to be honest. It was really tough. But but at, at the end but of like all of that. like boot camp, you become a good soldier. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, you know, it's like I, he beat the, beat the crap out of me. I don't know how I, how many swear words I can use. but Oh, you can curse people, yeah, say whatever you want. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll keep it fairly clean. But he just beat us up. Wow. Frank and I just got, but, but it, it tears you down and then you build it up. So at the end of that, we were much better and had a better idea of what we should do. So <laughs> how did you come up with the opening riff for Never Cinema? Hmm. I've literally never heard anything like that before. Thank you. Or, or since. Thank you. It was so freaking, I mean, I don't even know how you would, how that, connected the dots in your brain i don't either i think a lot of <laughs> really i think a lot of people they go they don't they don't know where where, where do, i don't know i know it it comes from everything i've heard in my life it comes from how i play that sort of that 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 i do that a lot too much if you listen to the first album i'm doing that 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 
So it was an evolution from that sort of natural tendency for me to syncopate. Where, I don't know. It was just, we were, we were touring. Okay, here's how things happen a lot. You're touring, you're playing the same songs every night, okay? Every night, same song. You're getting really bored, okay? And so during sound check is a chance to try things different. And a lot of songs are written on the road. You may know that, right? A lot yeah. of really great songs. Because you, you're just, you're, you're kind of like a, a transmitter and you're, you're just open to everything. And it's just your psyche is in a weird place, but it's a very creative place. So, um, so during sound checks, we were just playing around with all kinds of things. We didn't want to, you know, we don't want to do our songs and sound checks. I'm tired of our songs, right? So I remember the night I did that, I started going, Dah! and it was like all overdrive. Dah! It's that guitar right there. The, the red strat. The, the red sector strat. The red boy. And I started just going, tah, 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 and then I hit a harmonic. Dun, dun, right? I started playing with that. And then Larry, uh, Larry Carter, the drummer at that time, he was our second, sort, third, fourth. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you guys wrote. Everybody we, rotates drummers, man. Man, wow. It's a hard, hard gig. Yeah, the drummers blow up, you know. Um, but he started. He just started going in with me, and so he's getting the. So we were locked. We have this great groove, okay? So yeah. we go, okay, this is something. This is something, okay? So we got a guitar and a drum. Then Frank comes in with this bass melody really if you know i don't i don't know if it's you notice but i don't play any chords in that song no, it's all it, around it, an e harmonic it's all e he's moving the chords he's going like e to b he's bouncing and so it was ingenious and he sees this great and he does this little hop thing bum, bum, bum. and that's from he was a great fan of Chic. I don't know if you know the band Chic. Oh yeah, Chic with Nile so, Rodgers, cool, sure. They have this yeah. sort of hopping bass thing, right? And he loved that, and so he kind of incorporated that into it. So the bass line is It's a great. It's it's perfect. Okay, so he starts working that out. So now we've got this thing for the, which is the main verse, right? And uh, and this is all going on in sound check. Yeah, we wrote it at sound check, and we record. Yeah. And so he, he, Frank, always had a record, uh, uh, a tape recorder. It's a tape recorder, right? That's a tape recorder. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that ages you, doesn't it? When's so the he, last time you even said those yeah, words? I know, my God, <laughs> tape. Wow, I'm really old. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it, right? And now that's it, man. It is what so it is. So he would tape these um, sessions, right? And and so slowly, and Debo and so Debor is listening to this, and she starts writing lyrics to it. So it became, you know, it was evolving sound check writing. That's that so song. cool. So it evolved from that. Yeah, that's how it that's started. That's so cool. Yeah. You know, one of the things is like, in especially in punk or alternative, usually. The individual instruments don't typically stand out. It's it's really a sum of the parts is greater than the whole, specifically mm -hmm. in that yeah. genre very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. But this song in particular had such powerful parts for everybody. All yeah. of you guys, the mu the actual instrumentation and the music was yeah. so freaking cool. Everybody was Thank just you. like really on point and like, mm. you know, Frank was bouncing all over the yeah. place. The, gro <laughs> he, the groove in there was yeah. phenomenal. You know, the yeah. guitar, every, it was just, it's a really unusual track, it, especially in the alt genre. I thought it was just the way you guys put it together and talk about arrangements. I mean, that was just really well arranged. Yeah. Thank you. Well, apart if... So we we ultimately developed about three different parts, and we were just kind of playing that the end result that you hear on that record is an edit. And so what happened was, I remember I remember this so well. Would you want the story? The, the recording well, you, of it I, is. Well, I'll tell you what I want the story <laughs> about. You mentioned when we first taught. You said make sure to ask me about never say never that it almost didn't get made. Yeah. So that's it almost what I didn't get know. okay. Yeah. It would have been made, but it got made at the right time. It, it's it's a miracle that 
we we were Ian Taylor, their engineer. He's the one who did that, right? And it's a miracle that he heard it. We were just about to. Do you want the story now or later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so this is again Boston. Right now, damn it! <laughs> you got it. I'll do it. <laughs> um, again, Spit Club, Boston. Spit. This is the Spit. This is our club. This is you know where we. So we played our last show. Where we recorded three songs for the EP. Okay, we were done. Right. We were only going to do, uh, or we had a fourth, I think. So it's going to be four, but I forget what the fourth one was. Okay. So anyway, we play this show. We're leaving, right? We we've moved all our equipment out of Sync and Sound. We're ready to go. We're just doing a last show. We go home. Okay. So we're doing the show, and it's a great crowd. They're, oh my God! So we play. We they kept going for encores, encore, encore. And at, we didn't have any more songs. We were done. We had nothing. And so we go, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We go, well, we got this jam thing. <laughs> we just never say never, right? Yeah. It's just a jam, right? Um, okay, let's do that. <laughs> so we went out and we, we just said, listen, you guys, this isn't really ready to go. But we have this last thing. This is it. This is all we've got. So we, right. we played that. And Ian was in the audience that night okay? oh shit. and he heard it and he goes oh my god so after we finished he goes we gotta go back to the studio you gotta record that right now and so they loaded all of our stuff back into the studio okay and like and, right what is that like one in the morning or something like that yeah it's yeah, one it? or two and yeah when they load in and we go to we go to sleep sort of not really you know you're you know how oh my god. Yeah. you're on the road you're just you know, blah, blah, blah. we kind of had this terrible sleep. Um, and Isn't so, it great and, being being like thirty years old? And your body can do yeah, that. Your body, two oh, hours God. of sleep, no worries. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do it. I, I, oh my God, no, I couldn't do so that if you paid me a million yeah. dollars. So yeah. can I take a nap, please? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we so and then we just go into the studio early afternoon, probably or something, and then we we start jamming it out and just, so we played these parts, put them all in, just jammed it out, all the parts we knew. And then they stopped and then they made an edit of those. So they made a sort of chorus, ver verse, chorus, bridge. They made a real sort of traditional kind. Of, if you listen to that song, the, the arrangement's pretty traditional. It, it sounds great. out there, but the arrangement is really, you know, yeah, normal. Yeah, but very much. So it's an edit. It's an edit. And they edit made it put the pieces, okay? And so after that was done, we're we're all done and then Ben and Deborah put on their parts and Ben did the sax part. It was, you know. And he's playing the bass line basically. Right. Ah, that, ah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so he get he gets that from Frank's, you know, great melody, right? So that's and th and then it actually, almost so didn't that's, happen. It that's amazing. Just luck. Yeah. And, it was, and it's the perfect people to do that song. Nobody else would have done it like that. So that is. That's you know, awesome. So you, it's luck. so cool to go back and look at like, how did lightning in a bottle come to be? That's kind of a that cool would, thing to do in your life. So again, you ask me about luck and happenstance. It's that's one of those really fortunate moments. If that song had been in the wrong hands, it just wouldn't have happened. That studio well, it... is amazing, right? You get this huge. They had a room just for the kick drum, okay? Wow. Just for the kick drum, okay? Uh... And Frank, and we're, we're all looking at. Do you want to hear that? I'm in the I'm in the top floor of the studio, in a huge room. It's just for guitar, right? <laughs> I'm alone in this cavern. It's triple mic'd. It's it's just wah, right, and then Frank's in his own room downstairs. We're looking at each other on a TV, closed circuit TV. Was we're that hip weird hip recording like that? Not being well, in we a got room used together. to it. You get used to it. Okay. It was weird at first. Yeah. But the thing is, you get this extreme separation, right? That's yeah. and then you can, you know. But and then Larry has his own drum room and a, a room just for the kick. It's. That's crazy, man. You hear the kick on that on that track. It's just it's thunder. The whole so track anyway, is really good. Yeah, well, it's, we were really lucky. We had the right people. 
who respected us, you know, enough to let us, you know, just do what we wanted to do. That was, that was fantastic. But yeah, it all, boy, it almost didn't happen. It was really just chance on that one. Yeah. That's a very good story, man. Thank you for sharing. Thank that. you. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys released three albums and one EP in four mm. years. The second and third record both had hit singles on them, but the band broke up like right after that. What happened? I mean, I'm not whatever you're comfortable, you know. Oh, that's okay. I, yeah. Okay, so you've probably heard this before. Bands are like a marriage. It's a marriage, okay? Some marriages are great. Some aren't. Yeah. You have five personalities just. and That's tough so, to make that work. Yeah, and I just, at the, we just got, I got fed. I don't know. I just. I was not happy with not being in control of my life. I'm a really kind of independent person and it's hard for me to like run my life by committee. It's just tough for me. And at that point, we just weren't personally getting along so well without, again, I don't want to get too specific, but no, there no, was no, just some, some, you know, it, it wasn't a happy place anymore. We weren't communicating very well. We we weren't re sitting in. You know, when we started, we all sat in the same room and we played with each other and you know worked out stuff. And that was sort of not happening anymore. So I didn't see it going anywhere after that. Just became not fun. That last record was. It was tough in a way. It just I we just weren't weren't the band we had been and the it just was falling apart you know it's yeah you know, so we weren't even sitting in the same room like playing together anymore so how do you it's like well how do we write songs go to so marriage I, counseling yeah, <laughs> i don't know man i don't think it works <laughs> so that's what happened it was yeah. just you know we just kind of fell apart it happens, right? A lot of oh, I'm time, amazed that Mick Jagger and Keith Richards cannot just just want to murder each other. Right, that's a long I have time. No idea how that. I just don't know how that works. But you do, know. do you know the band, the Georgia Satellites? I think yeah, I've heard of them, but I couldn't tell you too much about um, them. Is it country keep, kind of country rock or something? Keep your hands to yourself was a big Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I know that song. Yeah. So Dan Baird, the leader of that band, I had him on the show here, and he said something which really stuck with me. He said, Craig, you know, because they had that was their hit song, first song, first record. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, the problem with that, Craig, is that um bands get along great when they're making no money. He goes, when you <laughs> it's, and he was, he hit the nail on the head. He, goes, yeah. he said, when you're struggling Money along, and you're all, everything. when you're all on the boat, just, you know, tr tr you know, trying to prevent the boat from the ship from sinking, you're all unified. He goes, once you get success, he goes, that's when the band breaks up and you know, it becomes a rocky yeah. road. I don't know why. And I don't think he meant it for every band, but I think it's a pretty common thing. Because I've had a lot. Yeah, that's of an interesting on. way of looking at it. Um, and there's no even reason why, like, you know, maybe people get proprietary. If I don't know, but he said that's when you introduce problems. That's when getting along becomes a challenge. Yeah, that you know, makes a lot when, of sense. Yeah, yeah not, not that we were not really rolling in the dough, but there was a lot of publicity happening and. You know, you do this interview and you do that, and I didn't get my interview, and you know, just ego. My, yeah. e you know, look, I have an ego. I'm not. Yeah. I, I, if I had it to do all over, I would do things differently. You know. Yeah. I was well, kind I mean, of offended who, about I didn't get a. You know, I thought, well, you know, we're, I'm a song. I'm the songwriter, and I'm not getting any attention, and you know, I, right. it sort of rubbed me. But you know, and yeah. I was, I, I wouldn't have done that probably. I'm as much Man. to blame as anyone. Okay, it's well, that's, um, how many things do we could we look back at our lives? That's the beauty of getting old. You realize mm. you get a little, you get a little perspective, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're like, man, I should have done this differently. I should, and then you can. It, all other thing is, at least that I've 
appreciate it is you come clean, you recognize it quicker and then you can own it quicker and apologize and move on. Whether it's, you know, yeah, friend, spouse, anything, you know, it's like, yeah, boom, you know, you just, it's, it's, you're smarter, you know? Yeah. When you're, your tw- you're in your twenties and you're just you don't running have any, around. Yeah. You have no you're frame like a of kid. reference. I was like a kid, you know, you're just a kid. You are a kid. You are. Yeah. yeah. You have and no frame you do of reference. stupid things and you, you say stupid things. Yeah, of course. But, but you are, cre- you know, you're, peak creativity is those 20s the 20s for you know for me for, for a, lot a lot of people, people. yeah although yeah. i still write songs um i still write some stuff i really like it's just um i don't have a band to do it with and i um i i, I record a lot of stuff i do do you so really in in a sense i'm as creative as i've ever been but i'm not a lyricist sure and uh, i need one but dude, it's so time to get I, I the did, band it together. It didn't leave me really. It didn't. And that, that desire to, you know, write a song, it's still in me. It every, every day, right. It's there. It will never go away. And some stuff I've done, I, I really do like, you know, so it's not like everything died yeah. but in your twenties. It's that's you. A lot of times it's peak creativity. And we were all just, you know, at, at, especially around the EP, we were just. <clears throat> oh, it's, you know, it's, it's great. It's great. We're stuff, working right? really well together, yeah, yeah. you know, so. But it is tough. To, I mean, just think <clears throat> about it's hard enough. You said it opened up with a band like a marriage. It is. It's hard enough getting along with one person 24 7. And now, and, and really you multiply that. Yeah. And when you multiply that, and it's not five times as hard, it's like to the fifth, you yeah. know, exponentially. It's exponential, yeah. It yeah, is. because everybody's got their own world, their own agenda, their own, you know, and, and, and as kids, you're like, yeah, you're, a kid. Man, you're a kid. My, my yeah. shit's more important than your shit, right. you know? Yeah. So it's you amazing know you can you're... actually yeah. get anything done. It, re- it really is. <laughs> it re- and that's the benefit of having like producers and, you know, the old school and the old days record companies that could shepherd you through. Let's not talk about w- was it equitable or not. That's a separate issue. Right. For some it was right. for others. It yeah. wasn't for sure. But, you know, that is the value of, you know, y- y- you're a, and, and you guys were older. Imagine you got like a younger band, like in their teens or, or early 20s marshalling yeah. those kids yeah. i mean you're you're a father you know i'm a dad you know it's marshalling young kids around is not easy you know no well, you know, it's well, funny the first uh tour we did i think i want to this is how how it is we had one van okay all the members that's five <laughs> a seven man and a roadie and all of our equipment in oh one van God. can you it's like a, it was no. a clown car it was a clown car you open the how door, you like every s- person. I don't know how we did that. I, I can't believe we did that. Oh, it was my God. A pressure cooker. Yeah. So imagine. So that's seven the kind people of pro- and equipment. Pro- yeah. The whole, every, every piece of gear. It, wow. It, so it's in one van. It, I can't believe we did that. Yeah, that's right. That's, and that's we did that a complete tour of the, of the United States. Yeah. A couple of wow. times, about three times, I think. I can't believe we did it. So I'm just trying to tell you, you're in this pressure cooker, right? You have no privacy. I can't imagine. Oh <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Wow. A lot, you know, everybody does that, right? You see these band documentaries and they're all in a van, right? Oh, everybody's yeah. in a van. The whole band's in a van, living with each other, seeing every. Terrible yeah, thing but, you can see. Yeah, right, right. That's that's right? rough. There's no that's secrets rough. in a band. It really, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> what were uh? What would you say? Like maybe the um. Top two or three musical experiences you had. Okay. Um, the first rec, you know, making the first album, right? That's a big deal for any musician, right? Yeah getting your songs on a record that's just the dream right sure and then the next dream is hearing it on the radio oh my god i remember um sitting in a club a dance club in um 
San Francisco shortly after the EP was released. And I'm sitting with some friends, I'm drinking, and uh, Never Say Never comes on. I was like, oh, I know that. That's me. It's a weird feeling, right? It's really weird. So did you like... Go, what go did ahead. you say? What, like, so you're with your friends. You say, "Holy shit, this is our song." Well, I think I was with Larry, the drummer, at the time. We go, "Hey, that's our song." Yeah. Every, the whole, everybody in the they didn't recognize it, and they just jumped to the dance floor. Right? They go, "Oh, we, I love this song." They didn't know we were there. Right? I love this song, and we were. That like, is so cool. Wow, that was a big deal. Mm. And Very then much. Love, uh, uh, Having never seen never in a movie and watch, I remember we also never. Um, what was the first? Yeah, it was uh, Reck, Reck, Reckless. <coughs> the first, the first movie it was in. I think it was what's I forgot the name Reckless or something, but it had uh, Aiden Quinn. Yeah, and uh, remember that guy, the beautiful blonde girl. I forget her name. And so we all go. We go into the movie theater, right, and watch the movie. <laughs> And we know, you know, we knew the song was in the movie, right? But we didn't know when. So we're all sitting there watching, and then, and it's this big movie, right? In a theater, right? And then the song comes on, and it's like, oh, my God. And then you watch the credits at the end of the movie, and there's your name. There you go. Yeah. So that's, a, that's pretty you know, cool. These are, these are dreams, right? Yeah. It's just unreal. And then the other one is Dick, being on Dick Clark. That was just a milestone. On American Bandstand? Yeah. Really? A, you can look that up. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. But that was, you know, if I, if, you know, just sitting in like, you know, 1977, and if somebody had come up to me and said, oh, by the way, you're going to be on Dick Clark in about, you know, five years, <laughs> I would have thought they were nuts, right? Um, that was a, he and he is a great guy. Oh my god! What was that show like? It's so funny, right? Because you don't play, right? Um, the new edition, by the way, was on the same show we were. Um, That's funny. Yeah, they have, and it's 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 a TV show, right? And it's like, okay, right. everybody get up and dance, and you know, and then they set you up, and and you rehearse it, right? A playback. And then you just mime the song live. And you unplug it. Nobody's plugged in. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so but funny. It's Dick Clark. I mean, we never would do that. That was This is a big exception to the rule, right? Right. We were, we're a live not, band. We that's not very punk. It's, it's the opposite <laughs> of punk. <laughs> totally. But we were so jazz. You can see it in our – we were just – That's we cool. Had a ball, right? I'm going to watch that, And he's such a nice man. guy. He was a great guy. He was so warm. That's another surprising thing. You think everybody in the music business is just a jerk, right? But there are these people that are just, wow, what a great person. That's awesome. They're, they're there, these gems, right? They're not yeah, all yeah. a bunch of jerks. So he was a great guy. He was just nice. If you look back at the musical environment of the early 80s, right, what – would you say are some of the differences between what fans wanted back then versus what fans of the same genre of music might want now? If you can answer this, like, is there any, is there, anything, is, is there, is, is there a genre? What's the genre? What's the comparable I, genre now? I don't right. really know. Th that was my, that was my <laughs> kind of like uh, angst in, in putting this question together. I don't know either. Because it's yeah, like I, every, there's like big categories now, but this seems like it's there's so more atomized, of them. It's so atomized, right? It's just it, it, everything is like this and this and this and this, and it's the and, and if you don't is, know what this is, it's oh, that's Americana. <laughs> yeah, or something. Just yeah. I mean, I don't know. I can't answer that. Yeah, I, don't know I wasn't sure if you'd be able to. Yeah. But, the one, the difference between the audience is, you know, with social media and all the technology, the audiences are just a different animal altogether, right? Again, when we're playing, think about this. There's only vinyl. There's no CDs. Right. Um, there's, 
there's no social media. There's no internet. There's no computers. There's no phones. There's no Instagram. There's none of this. Yeah. So people, you know, you, come you gotta... to see you and, and, and come together there in that space. It's a physical space. So it's completely different. I have no idea. Yeah, what that's a great like. point now because – if yeah. you think about it, the amount of energy you bring into something like that may not be higher, but it's r more raw because they haven't had, you know, three months to talk about it on social media. Yeah, they come and, there to share. It's really a share. Yeah, experience. right. Right. That's a very you interesting know? point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's um, an interesting point. Yeah. I was, so it's just, it was completely different. You know, a lot of bands. I I wasn't really aware of this. But a lot of bands are have pre-recorded. I don't want to. I could name some names, but oh, you mean like like uh, on live in concert? Not, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pl well, yeah, plenty of yeah, plenty of people, especially the of. especially the larger shows. They yeah. have to because I, they I just don't they have do, the instrumentation to support. That was it. unheard yeah. of. Yeah. Of course. Right. Well, I they mean, didn't have the technology. Yeah, right. The either. technology wasn't there, but yeah. it forced you. To yeah. become better, right? You can't fake right. it. No. For you know, sure. So that's um you know, that's diff that's a different thing too. It makes you keeps you honest. Except yeah. for bandstand. Of course American bandstand you're just faking but everybody knows it's like pro wrestling, right? <laughs> that's yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the exception. Pro wrestling. But, yeah, it's like that, right? But and everybody knows it, so it's like not a secret. So it's just right. fun. But you just, it was unheard of that you would, but you couldn't do it. Yeah. Right? So what, now there's all these do, gimmicks, right? What What did you do, Peter, once the band broke up? What was your oh, trajectory okay, so, after that? Uh, I went to law school, <laughs> which is wow. weird. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, I was a no. lawyer for a while. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did, how did that come about? <laughs> Holy uh, shit. So, I, you know, I was a unit. I, I've, you know, been educated, you know, formally educated. Uh, I went sure. to Berkeley, got a, you know, bachelor's in English literature. So I was a student. See, all this music stuff was just accidental. I never, ever planned to do any of that, right? So this was, was all never, random for you. Yeah, it's random. It is. But it would, you know, but again, you talk about luck and be, it was, you know, my, I was always playing music somewhere with someone. I was out right. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, that, you, yeah. You I don't get lucky there. sitting in your house. Behind yeah. The uh, yeah. Right. That never would. But I would, so, yeah. but I was like, oh, I'm going to play guitar and get a record deal and be on American Man's. No, none of that. It was, you know, like you say, it was random. Yeah. So after I graduated from Berkeley, I was like, wow, well, what do I want? What am I going to do now? <laughs> like, you know, I didn't, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I was, you know, messing around and, you know, going here and there. Uh, but so after the band broke up, I wanted to have a, some sort of way to make money by myself. So I went to law school after that, which was really an wow. adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Was, wow. I had to be complete. 180 in yeah. sort of everything you're doing, right? That was what tough. kind of law did you study? Like, what what kind of lawyer did you become? Well, I be, I became a civil litigation. It was okay. Yeah, I'm not one now. Obviously, I I don't know what I was thinking. It's just not me. I did well in law school. I was this guy. You know, I'm kind of this guy who can you know do do school. You know, get get through it, do it well. But the actual being a lawyer was just, oh, my God. There was Not a show fun. called L.A. Law at the time. I don't know if I you remember know that show. It. Yeah, I, I remember go, that wow, show. Wow, that looks like fun. He's yeah, driving around in a Porsche, and he's with all these girls. And I, I thought that was what it was, and then I found out, oh, <laughs> you're sitting in an office, like, wanting to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so that That's was. so funny. Yeah, that was, yeah, it wasn't for me. Oh my God! And, it's a and, uh, grind. What a grind! You live in Japan now. When did yeah. you move there? And and which, by the way, I want to thank you because it's like I don't know, like probably eleven. No, it's not that. It's eleven ten. 
Yeah, that's late. 11 p.m. I, it's, I appreciate it. Oh, it's not late. For, that's I'm a night owl. That never How left did, me. What made you move to Japan? What prompted that? And again, random. Again, no plans. What did John Lennon say? I had the John Lennon quote, right? Life, ha- life is what happens when you're busy making busy other making plans. plans. That's yeah. it. That's that's me. That's me in a nutshell. Um, so it was around 1995. I'm living in Los Angeles. I'm kind of working part time as a lawyer. I'm not making a lot of money. I have a wife and a son. <laughs> it's you know what that's like. You've got yeah, to take care shit. of your family. Yeah. And I, it's just, we're not doing that well. And my wife goes, look, let's just, why don't, look, you have this background in English. Let's go to Japan for three years. <laughs> is, is your wife Japanese or like? Yes. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. I get, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. You don't. Yeah, my wife's Japanese. So. Okay. Because I, um, I was like, wow, that's random. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, no, so there's that. She goes, why don't you go? <laughs> I know you can get a job. And yeah, it, at that time, it was like they were pulling people off the street. Anybody spoke English, they would just throw you in a classroom and pay you a hundred bucks an hour. Right? It was crazy. Oh, and to, that to, those to days to are teach. gone. Yeah, to, to anybody. Yeah. They, yeah. They just were. Do you speak English? Well, come on. <laughs> hundred bucks an hour. That's what it Interesting. was like. Interesting. It was weird. This is so your wife. The, yeah, go ahead. So she, she, your wife said, "Hey, let's move to Japan for three years." We, we yeah, said, let's, let's do that. Let's take care of our. Yeah, let's. You know, we, we got to be serious here. And I said, "You know, that's a good idea. This can work." And I thought it would be for three years. <laughs> Again, and, things happen. Uh, anyway, so I. That's when we went, and um, I, I started working for like English schools in Nagoya. I'm. Near, I live near Nagoya. Okay. I live in a small town outside of Nagoya. So I started working for um, some medium-sized schools. It was really easy to get a job. And I was doing some editing, too, for a, for a science laboratory of Nagoya University. I have an ed- – I'm a – I can do – I'm an English major, okay? So I've written a lot, and I, I know how to edit and do copy and stuff. So I had, like, three jobs, you know. And I was playing also. Oh, wow. In, in – uh, in uh, bars in Japan, that was really fun because they're like, "Oh wow, the real thing." <laughs> Let me <laughs> ask you a question fun. about that because you're a foreigner and you're a musician, you're legit musician. Yeah, I'm a musician, and I can sing. I, you know, I'm a, I started out singing, right? That's yeah. really my thing, right? Well, you're a single songwriter playing acoustic. Yeah, but I was yeah. just covering songs. Okay, uh, I I played a few of my own, but mostly I was just covering songs, and they, they just, you know, they like it. It's Wow, it's the real gaijin. For, foreigners are called gaijin, gaijin, right? And um, so they were just, wow, this is cool, right? And so, I, yeah, I was doing that too. So I was busy. I, I read Murakami, uh, Haruki Murakami. Have you ever read any of Murakami? Uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. So he's a he's a Japanese writer, incredibly famous. His books have been he's like a Bukowski guy as far as where his books have been translated into I should know him. languages. He's an incredible writer, but one of his things in there, he's a fiction writer, brilliant guy, Haruki Murakami. Uh, in his in all of his books, he's got a, he's got recurring themes. So what are his recurring themes? Uh, jazz music playing in the background. Uh, the, the protagonist usually owns or frequents a jazz club. Um, uh, eating boiled eggs, eating uh, 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 spaghetti. There's a certain amount, there's, and they recur. So uh, in his record, in his books, he's always talking about jazz clubs and clubs. Have has Japan had the same? suffering with the nightclub situation, you know, with clubs and venues just either closing down or, you know, hey, we have a DJ now. We don't, you know, we don't have bands like the music scene. Is it the same there now as it is in the States? You know, I honestly, I, I really just am not connected to it at all. I couldn't really answer that. I was doing just little bars and things. I, I, so I really have no idea about what the scene is, I, I, it is, it is pretty healthy, right? Like they have lots of tours. You know, McCartney comes here all right. the time. Sure. The Stones. I saw the Stones in Tokyo. No, yeah, Tokyo. No, I. 
Yeah, I guess it was Tokyo. I saw McCarty. McCarty came to Tokyo and Nagoya. I, I'm still a McCartney fan. I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm the host. You know, that's my roots. Okay, but, you started. Um, but so th- there's a very lively music scene. Okay. And there are a okay. lot of um, Japanese bands that are just really good. So if you're just watching the TV and they'll have these music shows and there's some really amazing uh, just bands constantly coming out, right? Yeah. They have a very healthy music scene, right? And, and it covers sort of all genres, right? They have yeah. like kind of hard rock and then pop, and they have these girl groups that are really popular. You know, I don't know if you know these groups, but they're no, I, they're oh my I, god, they're man, they're they're factory. They have these boy band, girl band factories, and they just churn them out, right? And it's really funny. Well, that's the um, same here. They do the same yeah, thing. It's pretty amazing. Um, interesting. So when when you moved to Japan, what were some of the biggest cultural adjustments that you had to make? Yeah. It's not like moving to Italy, you know. Oh, where it's you could it's a, pass for an Italian, right? <laughs> you are a foreigner. You're a gaijin. Right. It, you you cannot blend okay you can't so blend in yeah that's, yeah that's a really i still um i will be leaving here in a couple of years but uh really that's t- yeah yeah i'm 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 out but i, come, I come, never wait. was comfortable here it, it's you it's, you can't you, you you're always the foreigner especially i live in a small town okay if i go to the 7-eleven i'm the you know Oh, what are you doing here? Right? There's a but you others, speak but... fluent Japan. Japanese. No, I don't speak... fully, it's My Japanese is it's okay. But I can't, okay. like, have deep discussions. Um, I can, you know, get around. But right. it, it, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I could be the most fluent person in the world. You're a foreigner. You're always a foreigner. It's just the culture, okay? And it's, they're not They're not mean and they're not, they don't hate you. In fact, right. they're, mostly they're very kind and respectful. But you're not Japanese, and you never will be, you know? So don't try. <laughs> and it's sort of funny to see these foreigners come here and think, oh, I'm going to, you know, study a uh, tea ceremony. You know, it's like, why? What are you doing? They just think you look like, I don't know, a fish on a bicycle or something, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> interesting. That's my I, – I always think, what are you doing? You're not so, <laughs> so you're going to move back to the States at some point? No, actually, I'm going to probably move to the Philippines. Interesting. How <laughs> That's come? another story. It's uh, a, a good place to retire for cheap. Okay. And yeah, I, it is. You know, I'm just looking at America from afar. I don't, I don't know. I don't. Oh, it's scary here, man. Yeah, it's, I, I if just you're not don't living want here. to do it. Yeah, I'm I, done. I get kinda. that. I I guess it's that. really, but you know, I used to go back like all the time in the nineties and the early two thousand. It was okay, but recently it seems just it's post COVID, man. It, yeah, like yeah, the COVID people, thing. That was that was really shocking. I think that just pushed just, people over the edge. Man, people, there's a lot but of after, yeah. So I don't know. Co- a lot of struggling, a lot of mental illness, a lot of people mm. like don't seem to have coping skills. You got skills it too, right? You told me that you got sort. you uh, actually COVID? got oh, yeah. the, 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 the bad one. I got the mild yeah. one. You got the yeah. I, I got them both. The second one. Oh, you got them both. Out. I got them both. Jeez. My wife gives it to me all the time. She kept giving me COVID. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, the first time I got it bad. She, I'm glad I got it rather than her, but um. Yeah, she, she got it mild. Mine was bad, but the second time we both, it was like a COVID light. It was just like a weekend. Yeah, I got the light thing. version. It was yeah. like the flu, basically. Yeah, for a few days. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't so, bad. I guess it was lucky, but yeah, that that whole thing. It seemed like at, when that was sort of over. I don't know. I just I don't know something. People about lost. America. People lost their shit. It seems like, and the, the I had a guy on last on my show, Sugar Ray Rayford. He's a blues singer, and he 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 made a comment, and he said people seem to have lost their ability to be civil. Civility yeah, is is right. not, you know, peop you can't like you just can't bump into somebody nowadays and say, oh, sorry. It's like right, you know, you get you're stabbed. In, you get you know, stabbed. What the fuck, right? What the fuck are you doing, yeah, man? Why don't you right. look out? Like, 
I'm yeah, sorry. You might die. You might die. <laughs> yeah, it, literally. It's and, just people have lost their yeah. shit. But you know, here it's the opposite, right? Yeah, I'm sure. I yeah. mean, nobody, everybody respects your space. They respect your property. They pay you when you're, they're supposed to, and they leave mm. you alone. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm and always amazed when I see Japanese. It's very civilized Japan. here, right? It's so the subway station yeah. is cleaner than most restaurants here. Yeah, it's a it, Japanese it, subway that's for station. Real, right? I mean, it blows my that, mind when yeah. you see the, cl- the cleanliness. I, I'm used. I'm used to feeling safe, and you know, not accosted, and you know. I don't know. Yeah, kids can walk around the street late at night and not worry. I see that on TV. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't, don't lock my – my school, I don't lock it up during the day. I don't even lock it. Really? It's oh, – all yeah. It, our, our, you, our door is usually unlocked during the day. Wow. And it's – you know, you just don't worry yeah. about – I don't want to – I don't know if I can do that anymore. No, Go no, security, the, s- safety, right? you know, a big yeah. thing here. Yeah, you got to be careful and you have to be, you know, have eyes on the back of your head. I have none have of to, that here. It's it's uh, so safe. Well, see, I grew up in New York and you have to have that there yeah, you're, anyway. Yeah, you're tough. So right. I don't I know about tough, town. but I'm just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a different, you have to just have a little certain survival skills activated all the time. Right, you know, yeah, so you're really with, used to that. I came yeah. from a small town in Northern California. It yeah. was, you know, Ozzy and Harriet, basically, you know? You yeah. know Ozzy and Harriet? <laughs> of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just you're, right on, something. you're right on the borderline. <laughs> yeah, that's of, right. Yeah, it's right on the borderline. I, I don't know your audience, what your demographic is, but they go, they may not look like, what the hell is that? No, it's what all across the board. demographic anyway? Are they, are they uh, mostly baby old? boomers? Okay, Mostly so baby boomers. That they yeah, get so that. everybody's okay. going to know Ozzy and Harry. Baby boomers <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, it's funny. That's what I grew up in. That was my uh, life, right? Small yeah, town. but that's so, I, that's so idyllic. There's so many things. Yeah. That, like having grown up in a total opposite place to that, I really uh, – and I, I was – again, when I was younger, I didn't – I was like, oh, New York's the place. Now, as an older guy, I realize – the value of living in a place like that, the the sense of community, the sense of safety, yeah, the sense of, it's and, really and it's just, true. and it's like, yeah. you know, when you're on, when you have to be on all the time, mm. there, there's a stress level I know. that comes with that, that is not necessary. I know. To, it, it does not add to your life's experience. Well, where you are now, is it better? Tampa, totally. Yeah. Ten- oh, oh, yeah. That's good. oh, yeah. Tampa's a nice oh, that's town. Great. I mean, I'm keyed up because it's my nature, you know, like, <laughs> because like I'll, I'll never leave the house without locking the door ever. Yeah. I and understand wife, that. Yeah. And my wife will be like, Hey, Craig, you just, uh, going for a walk while you lock the door. I'm like, Hey, you never get hit by the bus you saw coming. <laughs> that's my that's my growing up in the Bronx. That's my mentality. Okay. You know, that's how do you not good, like the, I'm like, hey man, what if someone comes in here and I'm not here? You know, and uh, so that's but, funny. But it's unnecessary. You know, is it really? It's, it's, it's unnecessary, uh, it's, really. Yeah, I mean, okay. for Tampa, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's you know, you can leave, you can walk around the block, and no one's gonna like. Well, that's you know, nice. Yeah, it's you know that's a I mean, lot I'm better, sure I think. Well, yeah, places, yeah, right. Yeah, New York is just a. Oh my like god, that. the things um, I read about that place. Let me ask you something. What? Yeah. Uh, what were some low points to whatever extent you're comfortable? <laughs> dark periods you've had to deal with, and how'd you get through them? Oh wow. Um. So, yeah, without getting too maudlin or something but um so i have a let's see my family four kids mother father you have four kids yeah Holy well shit. that was kind of normal in those God bless days. you man four kids that's uh, a no lot not me my 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 oh, fam- you, i have oh, two. Your fa- oh, okay. yeah i have two yeah, yeah no that's... my family was four kids okay that's a lot that's a... well it was kind of normal then right yeah i guess you know, I we're don't talking know. end of 50s you know i was born in yeah. the 1950s right well, right. And so that was kind of normal. But it's anyway, just a lot my of work. Fa- yeah, my poor mother, right? Yeah. But um so everybody's gone now except my brother and me. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, that's a yeah. 
that life happens, right? Yeah. Um, but my sister, you know, got my sister and I were really close, and she got cancer. Okay, so I, I, again, I don't want to make this into so sorry. You know, the whatever show, uh, Oprah or whatever. But it, that you <laughs> talked. <to, laughs> I'm going to start crying now. But, um, it's okay. It, it it's, was. I'm bad. sorry. It was bad. That was really bad. And I couldn't uh, be there to see her or anything because it was she. It happened really fast, and I was in Japan. I had to work, and I couldn't get away. And it just she's gone, right? And it was just it was terrible. I'm sorry, man. That's terrible yeah, to that's experience. Okay, but you asked me about my that that was a. I've had a lot of friends die. You know, Ben. You know, Ben. You you know, Ben just sure. died, right? Yeah, and our. Yeah. These are – you just realize that you're not going to live forever, right? And then Larry Carter, our drummer, he died. He had a heart condition, and Ben had Alzheimer's. And, uh, and he was young. Yeah, well, yeah, same, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, but uh, his whole family was destroyed by that. His brother got it, I think. His mother – his father. Oh, my God. The whole family just wrecked by that thing. So, yeah, these – you know. I've had a lot of people die around me, honestly. It's just. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, wow. I guess those are the that low sucks. points. Sorry, man. Yeah, well, thanks. But, you know, it that's life, you know. Yeah. Um, you can't um, protect yourself from, it's, you know, whatever's happened is going to happen, right? Who, yeah, you know, no, you it's going to happen. Yeah, you... But it, you still, it's just. Uh, I have had a lot of friends just, for whatever reason, just die, you know. Um, that's why I, I am so big on, you know, exercising and taking supplements and really taking care of myself. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, you know, go. What the, it it doesn't early. guarantee you anything, but it gives you resilience that yeah. you otherwise will not it have. Gives you a fighting, it gives you a feeling of control over, mm-hmm. so it's not like you're a victim of of the universe and you know you actually can take control of your health that's a big thing for me right that's something oh, i huge. can control i mean yeah. I, you know i can't control everything but i can control you know i feel like you know i'm 68 years old i feel amazing i feel really yeah. good right? right right um and it's there's a really easy reason i exercise all yeah. the time I, and it's not a difficult i don't go to the gym i just Today I do this and this and this and I have this and I've got my kettlebell over here and I've got my pull-up bar over here. So yeah. that is in your control, right? You can yeah, totally. You don't have to be this old man, right? Sitting oh, on the couch drinking beer. Dude, I'm with you. I mean, you can sit on the couch and you can drink beer, but you can do that other thing and then yeah. it's okay to drink the beer. You know what I mean? Sure. You don't have to, like, be a monk or anything. No, so I agree with you. That's yeah, and- the... You know, and, and it's really the more a big you, deal for me. And yeah. the more you read now, they, they even rehab as almost all rehabs from physical injuries now consist of weight training. It's they've all yeah. finally come it's, around. It's to magic. The, yeah, it is. You, you, really you lift is. weights, right? You lift, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it's yeah, magic. I've been it's doing magic. That your body 30 just, years. Yeah. Okay, your body just loves it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's and anti it, it helps. It's the anti aging. Yeah, it's, that's the like the miracle cure, right? Yeah, that'll keep well, you young. It's so. funny. I I had some recent medical issues, which I, I mentioned something to you, and like anytime I've seen the doctor, oh, right? Like, yeah, that's... they're like uh, nothing serious, just like shit breaking down, repair. Yeah, you know? it, and, yeah. Uh, and they're <laughs> it like, breaks down. Oh, well, they're like you're young, you're young and healthy, you'll be fine. And I'm like, I'm not that young. They're like, no, but I mean, compared to most people your age, you're yeah, young and you're, healthy, and yeah. you'll you'll do great. Right. I'm like, okay, yeah. Good. And so when I hear that, it's like, all right, man. So my investment, that's how I look at it. It's my an investment, investment in, in myself has sort of paying off over yeah. the years. But it's you know? also very cheap. Exercise oh. is really cheap, right? And re- really cheap. Right? Yeah. You just, it's time. And there's no side, it's of, like, there's no poison side effects from the no, pills, right? No, none. Zero. So that's a, it's, it's a miracle, right? Yeah. But a lot of people just, for some reason, they just, it doesn't connect. I don't get, it. I, I never know. understood I have I know I have friends my age and they're just walking around like a penguin, you know. And it's like, what are you doing? Uh, but I can't say yeah. anything. It's like, 
I could fix you in a month, right? I, 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 I'm like almost want to say that, right? If you just well, do, right? Because I, when I you're when you're older and all of a sudden you see the energy level you have and the energy level that your peers have, and it's like, wait, something's wrong here. Yeah. And this is kind of voluntary. So why would you It's voluntary. It's not necessary. It's yeah. not necessary. Right. They why think, well, I'm getting old, for- so I must – so I'm not going to walk anymore. It's, I just don't, I don't get it. But a lot yeah. of people just, you know, they, they just let it go. So. No, I'm with you on that a hundred percent. It's, mm. it's the number one elixir, yeah. you know, it just, and they, and, and if you get injured now, even like they say, m- keep moving, man, motion is lotion. Yeah. That's what's going right. to rehab you faster. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you, man. Totally. Yeah. totally. Mm. Um, one thing I ask you, you guys gave equal writing credit to all the band members on every song. Well, that's Which, not exactly correct. Okay. It, it, a lot of general, okay. In the beginning, when I joined the band, Frank and Deborah had sort of written a lot about five or six songs. And if you look on the first album, I, I did, I got writing credit on not all of them. We had to, I remember sitting in a room going, well, okay, you really weren't there. It wasn't a big sort of contentious thing, but they, we sort of all decided how much I – they had written all of them, okay, but they kind of had to decide how much I had done as a writer and to be included yeah. as a writer. So it wasn't all of us, especially, even on the first album. And Ben but didn't. Late, later records, it seems like most of the songs were credited to everybody. Well, like the EP, I think everybody got it. And then um, the last album, it kind of changed a little bit. And if you look at the writing credits, it, it's mostly Deborah Frank and I. And David okay. Kahn actually gets writing credit too. Yeah, I saw So it, it kind of evolved a little bit. Um, but yeah. I think generally it kind of worked out, but it's not always that way. And, you know. Is that like a decision that you all made? Like, hey, we'll just give credit to everybody? Or like, or did you actually just do what you said, go through the process of, oh, you know, you, you guys did this and you guys didn't? The first album was, there was like an, a decision about an active decision, like who did what? as a right. writer. Okay. After that is kind of be, then it became the sort of the group effort and yeah. we just sort of concluded everybody. And then it kind of af, at the end it was well and that was again, you know, yes why a band breaks up songwriting. It can be a yeah. is, and I, and again, this is kind of me. I was thinking, you know, I um I'm not getting enough and this is sort of my ego coming out. I, w- I just thought I wasn't getting enough credit for what I was doing. And I kind of wanted the songwriting to show my contribution. So I kind of pushed for that. I, you know, if I had it to do all over, I probably wouldn't have. And I, yeah, I would have, I don't think it really made a big impact financially on anybody, but I kind of pushed for, more recognition because I just felt I was kind of getting left out. And I, I probably wouldn't have done that if I had to do it all over again. So yeah. it kind of evolved, but yeah, generally, you know, everybody's sort of included, but not on the first yeah, album, you know, more so than most bands. That's what well, I Well, You know, like you yeah. two, you know, you two always had that thing. Everybody's writing, uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, that's you know. <laughs> not so much. Yeah, no. <laughs> Beatles, no, yeah, right? not all so much. Yeah, Lennon McCartney and then Harrison would do his though. Ringo, mm-hmm. me. so it's all different. It depends on the band. Yeah, very but it much, can be so. a contentious issue, right? Yeah, like, well, especially back then when it meant something financially. And, yeah, it, and yeah, you know, that's it. but we did have a yeah, we had a publishing company. We learned how to publish, self-publish. That really, great. That's enough, if I had to like counsel any songwriters, somebody, yeah, we had good advice. We self-publish. That we've that's great. You know, yeah, that's really that's important. fantastic. Yeah. Hey, did you ever have a crazy experience with a fan? <laughs> 
uh, like what kind of crazy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What was your craziest experience with a fan? Well, I, well, okay. You, this is a, like the worst gig ever sort of thing. Okay. Uh, you you know Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, right? Yeah, okay. of course, yeah. So Paul Kantner, you know him, right? Yeah. The guitar right, player. Yeah. Okay, so he yeah. took a liking. He really liked us. You know, he's from San. They're from San Francisco, right? Right. So they're a local. They're a local band, right? So he, when we start after we released our record, we got sort of you know uh, a buzz about us. He um, kind of you know promoted us in his own way for no reason, no other reason than he liked us. So it was really nice. He's, he was always sort of talking about us in the press and everything, you know, being really was nice. supportive. It was really yeah, nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, <laughs> I guess he had this great idea that we should open for the Starship. Oh, okay? my God. Can, this uh, is yeah, so totally I diametric. Stupid. I can't opposite. Oh, my wow. God. I have a picture. There's a picture on the CD. It's the the other, this the the other side of the cover, and it's a picture they took of us just before we did that that show. So I can I always look at that picture and go, "You have no idea what's about to happen." Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So go, you know what? Hi. He probably <laughs> he probably did it really out of a, a oh a he did giving he was a to, real yeah. giving place. He was. Oh, no, absolutely. There was no malice yeah. in it. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to get to the story. So we go on, right? And we are the opposite of them, right? Yes, And so totally. we, start, we start our little show, right? And it's like the, the audience is like, what the fuck? You could just feel it, right? Yeah. So we started getting booed, okay? Oh, my God. I don't know if you've ever been booed by thousands of people. It's, no. It's no joke. Yeah, that's it's not like fun. I don't have that thick of skin, okay? So the booze start just oh huge. That's a really it's oh my god. I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Anyway, but that and then the ice started flying. No they were throwing, people were throwing ice, ice, cubes, ice cubes, okay? So oh ice is god. sort of like a rock, you know what I mean? So yeah, this is like a play. A peaceful, a peace, love, and happiness now, band. Now, this is <laughs> wow. dragging Starship fans. Why? We didn't, you know, honestly, you didn't like the Starship. It's like this whole, it was like everything we hated about rock music. But anyway, oh, so right. the, the ice starts, you're playing and you're just like daunting ice, right? Cause Holy you get, crap. You get hit by Deborah, with, you know, they're throwing it at everybody. But mostly Deborah, because she's fronting, right? And we're going, yeah, yeah. what the hell? So we, I'm dodging ice. <laughs> and then we go, let's finish. And we finish our set really quick. We get off. It's like, boo. It was, that was terrible. That so was, Paul, th thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> but our management, I don't know. That was a stupid Well, they probably just thing. looked at it like, oh, my God, you're opening up for these guys that were mega stars. This is going to be great. Yeah, but Who yeah, knows? I don't know. I don't know. I That's mean, not we, a good we matchup. For, when we opened for U two, U two was really nice yeah. to us, right? Yeah. And that's they, a good match. They always asked for us, right? That's awesome. Bono was he? So we play. We accidentally played with them, opened for them one time in San Francisco, and uh, it was his birthday. It was really fun, and so he he invites all of us backstage to celebrate his birthday, right? That's really cool. Moet Chandon, right? I mean, he was really nice to us. That's cool. And so he liked the band. And so every time they came to San Francisco, we would open for them. Or not every, but a lot of, you know, we several shows we opened for them. That, that's, that's a good a, fit. Yeah, it's a perfect fit, right? Yeah, fan-wise, that's a much more common yeah. sense base. I remember learning, you know, watching the, the Edge play. And I, I was just gonna, learned just gonna from, I, like, was taking notes. I used to look at his pedal boards. Go well. What are you doing? And I look. And I, I use some of his effects. Right. That's how yeah. my sound. My sound changed. Like, if you listen to the first album and then the EP, my sound is completely different. And the reason is I was, you know, looking at his pedal board. 
But yeah, I, I go, how do you get that sound? It's like, oh, okay. And I'll th- well, he's okay. pretty amazing with it. Oh, he was, he was that band. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. In the beginning, amazing. just yeah, live. I, I, they're one of the best bands I've ever seen live. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's, it's like, have you ever seen them live? I'm trying to think yeah. as you're talking. I don't think I have. No. I, their time is kind of gone now. I think. Yeah. But yeah. Their live show was just. Oh my God! Right, it's something. I have a couple of live to. bootlegs from them. And yeah, well, phenomenal it's, shows. it's you. Some bands don't cut it so well live. Right? They just don't. Yeah, like I. That's the cool Stones that you open for them. You know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I saw the Stones could, once. Yeah, they're you know they're yeah they're, they're okay. It's, 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 it's a, a fun mess. show. It's, it's a, a mess, fun show. Right? It's yeah. a messy it's a sound. Fun, right. It's mess. But that's who they are. They're the stars. That's who that's, they are. Yeah, yeah that's who right. they are. But yeah. you, you know, but you, you hear, and then you hear you too. And at that time, it was like, oh my god. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was just really great sound and energy, and it it was quite impressive. But he was really nice, and he took us under. You know, he's like, I want you guys to play. You know, I went whenever we come in. That was really. But cool. I learned from that. That was like a big turning point in my like getting my sound better you know because i didn't know what i was doing the first album and then we start playing out and we're playing with them i was like listening okay getting guitar tones and so i was i got my a better tone going you know so the edge well yeah but one that was one of them yeah yeah totally give me your uh, top three desert island discs oh okay yeah i was just for just just for right now just for right now okay so one is kind of blue, Miles Davis. Right. Only the Lonely, Frank Sinatra. I don't. I urge you to listen to that. It's the masterpiece, masterpiece of masterpieces. Only and the I, Lonely. Only the Lonely, Frank Sinatra. It's art. Okay. It's a work of art. I have a, a couple a of Frank Sinatra beauty. albums I need to listen to. Okay. Yeah. And that, then I have to have a Beatles album, so it's probably the White Album if I had to choose. Yep. And if I could get a fourth, then it would be Beethoven's Ninth. Got to get Beethoven in there. Cover all the bases. <laughs> but, yeah. What um, What are the most important lessons you've learned from getting older? Oh, uh, well, like we said, stay healthy. That yeah. this is something you can control, you know. That's a big thing for me. I don't want to, you know, get sick and not be able to do what I want to do. Oh, I know. It's terrible. And I think just never stop doing, learning things, right? So yeah. I've, I've recently, I well, in the two years ago, I started learning to code just because I thought that might be fun. So, and I'm terrible. I'm not, I just, I'm not. I can't really. That's totally opposite uh, of Eng- English. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a different right. brain part right. of the brain. It's a different brain. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, it's not me, but I tried it just to see if I could do it. I, I can't, but I learned a lot of a lot of things, and it, it really focuses your mind gives you some discipline. It's very difficult. I don't know if you've yeah. ever tried it, but you think, oh, this I guy's just, years ago. He's just hacking and coding. Well, it's it's a big deal. You have to be really smart. These people. Well, are you have really, to think in a lot of contingencies. Yeah, if right. this happens, then that happens, yeah. and then you it's have logic. to remember it's, that. It's, and, yeah, it's, it's very super logic. logic. Super right. logic. Super, super These logic. These people yes. are so smart. I had no idea. Yeah, Once you try really to brilliant. do that, you. These people are unbelievably smart. <laughs> it's kind of well. The worst really is when humbling. there's a mistake, and you yeah, got like oh, yeah. twenty thousand lines of code, D-bug. and then you got to. You got to figure it out. But I heard Chad GPT yeah. can now debug for you now. No, you know does that? it really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, it's, no, but, the world. Yeah, by the way, the world the world changed about three months ago. Which it is yeah, now I, going I to agree be. With you. It is so. This is a total revolution. Yeah. So anyway, I agree with you I, on as that. I was saying, I never stop trying things, learning things. You know, I study Japanese every day. I study I study French again. You know, I just do stuff, learning stuff. Yeah. I don't ever stop that. So that's kind of my thing. Stay healthy, 
don't stop learning things. Um, well, you, you mentioned brain, Alzheimer's brain earlier. Active. Yeah. They so say that, that, yeah, socializing is number one thing to do, having friends, and number two is keeping your mind active. Yeah, keep or, or it exercise, active. Ex actually, exercising Exer is yeah, two, that's a, food, the and then keeping your mind active. Yeah. 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 And I take totally fish right. oil, and you know, I take a lot of supplements. They, I don't know if they – honestly, I don't know if they work. I may be just throwing nobody does. money away. But yeah, as an does. insurance, I'm, I take – I have this basket over here, just the stuff I take, right? Dude, let me I, tell you something. All my close friends takes are the, are the same. I take yeah. supplements. Everybody I know takes. But you don't really know. You have no idea if it really works, right? Or, or, or hurts. Or hurts. Yeah, it could even. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah, really. that's true. But but it was funny because I was talking with a doctor the other day, and I was she was talking about something, and I said, "Well, as a supplement thing," she goes. Well, you don't know what's in the supplement. I said, you think you know it's in some drug that you're taking? It, it, yeah, you know, right. It's like a, oh my God. There's like a list of like 30 side effects. Yeah. You, you don't know what's – I mean, you don't – I mean, you can look at the makeup, the chemistry, but obviously yeah. you have this list of side effects just because you can't champion that over a supplement unless you uh, split test it or try it. You oh, know? I won't. I don't go to the doctor. I, no. This I, is weird. I don't. I don't go. I haven't. You know, I haven't had a checkup in like thirty years. I haven't. Yeah, but they, but they. Do you do your I labs? I don't trust them. I don't do anything. Oh yeah, see, I the do only, labs. I don't. The only time I, I go to, labs. I go into the doctor when I got COVID. I right. once got pneumonia, and I went to the doctor. Okay, because I can't take no, fish oil for pneumonia. But no, I don't go. I don't yeah. want. I don't want it. the medical profession. Just we don't work together. And, you know, they give you drugs, like if you have high blood pressure, right? Okay, we'll take this drug forever, and it'll kill your heart, by the way, or something. They don't say, oh, well, why don't you jog? <laughs> they don't tell you, right? No, Just because go they're jogging. Not... You ever seen a yeah. jogger with, um, you know, diabetes? No. <laughs> yeah. It's so no. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. These, this. Well, that's not what they prescribe. System, right? That's not yeah, well, what they, they don't want to cure you, do they? Really, right? Well, it's not that them. I don't think they don't want to cure you. I think the pharmaceutical industry. Well, yeah, but the pharmaceutical industry runs the system. Really. Run, I know, right? Okay. Right. They, right? Yeah, exactly. So here, it's here's a, this drug. You're thing. sick. Here, take, you watch American TV, by the way. Like, how many the drug commercials? It's like unbelievable. Oh, dude, I don't watch TV very often. Well, I uh, almost seen it at occasionally, all. Right. But, I, mean, I but, watch my I watch my streaming stuff and Netflix and stuff. But I, I've yeah, seen I American that. commercials and it's like, oh, you feeling like here? Take this, and then they got this list of side effects. Like, oh, yeah, man. yeah. And there, it's, may I cause just want birth, nothing to do may with cause it. birth defects yeah, in oh my women God. between the ages of yeah. this and this. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. I know. So it's, I have no. I am not on scary. prescription drugs. I have none. It's I don't scary. have any. I don't well, you it. haven't had to, also, which is great. Well, because but that's what I'm saying. I don't. Yeah. All this stuff I do is so I don't have to do that, right? I totally so get it. I don't totally have any prescription it, no. drugs. I've never had one. Well, I've, totally if, if I had a specific illness, yeah, the doctor would give me some stuff. But as a like an antibiotic or something. Yeah, right. Exactly. If I were like specifically ill of something, but. Yeah, when I had COVID, yeah, I got all these meds. Fine, I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but as a lifestyle, no way, not yeah, going to do it. I no, I don't. I just don't want to do it. Um, happiest moment or time in your life? Ooh, boy, there's a lot of them, but uh, you you have these milestones. It has to be your children, right? I mean, that to, you know, if, if the, the biggies, I mean, I've done all, you know, making records and things like that, but your children have to be that, that my son, right? It's, it's a miracle. It, it, it sounds ridiculous, but it really is a miracle. And then my daughter, right? It just, it, that's got to be, you know, the pinnacle of my life so far is like really great, you know, wonderful things happening. I would have to put that up there, right? And, and that that's a legacy that just keeps going, right? And you, right, it does, you know, unless some terrible tragedy, but you just get to see this legacy continue. This is this is you 
grasping eternity, right? It, that's a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like people that don't have kids, I don't, and, you know, not. it's not for everybody. No, it's not but for everybody. I, you, you can't, it's hard to explain to them, you've, you know, you're, you've got this connection to eternity in a way, right? If it keeps going, right? That's somebody's going to remember you hopefully you know hopefully yeah no, i think <laughs> so yeah, I think that, that's a big deal that's my you know my kids yeah that's pretty cool do you have any hobbies outside of music um well exercise like i told you um learning things just trying different things mm -hmm. um I read books, of course. I, I I just sort of do this and that. Um, music is still with me. That's never going to leave me. I always have my guitar just like ready to ready to go over here, hanging up. Um, but yeah, I think if exercise, that's kind of a yeah. thing. I'm always reading about, you know, watching YouTube and TikTok and things, and like some guys like recommending some new thing. I'm always there. Oh, I gotta try this new supplement. Gotta try. It's kind of ridiculous, right? Because you don't know. But these people oh, are always supplements? recommending supplements. I yeah, know. You know like the problem with that longevity, is longevity. You know the barrier to entry in all those things is zero. So any like my daughter, she's uh, 23, and she'll call me she goes hey dad do you take this i'm like no i don't and so she goes oh i just bought some i'm like well, why are you buying it? i i saw it on tiktok and i'm like yeah, well, you know i said hmm. you got to do some research look into the science of this you know and there's it, just because somebody says something that's yeah, cool but right. do your own research you know validate the science of what you're doing you know yeah that's good uh, advice i don't always take yeah. it yeah I'm guilty of it too. I go, wow, that sounds amazing. I'll go to iHerb right now. Right now yeah. See, see, I'm in mar I'm a marketing guy. I've been in marketing for oh, my, really? you know, 30, oh, so you 30, know 30 years. So I'm like, I'm researching everything because I know how easy it is it's to a, say something and scam, make a claim. Yeah. Is yeah. sometimes it is, or or it's just misinformation because yeah. you know now the big thing is on every video. I don't have TikTok, but I do have Instagram. Like every other video, you see, hey man, listen to this. Uh, bo body hack. When you buy vegetables or fruits, you wash them in baking soda and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, now I see 40 videos. So I said to my wife, I say, hey, babe, do you ever see those videos about washing your uh, I've seen fruit, them. your strawberries? I've seen and I saw Yeah, them. and there's a ton Recently. of them. And, and she yeah, this it's all and uh and there's like the same it's like, you know, then one person sees it and then someone else, oh I can make a video about that. So there's like no originality. And I asked her, she goes, No, I don't do that. I, she goes, I just like doing this and this with the veg with strawberries and that. I'm like, Okay. I mean I've never had a bad strawberry. Yeah, and then fifteen work. minutes later you don't hear about you know, but uh TikTok is like Instagram on steroids, okay? Yeah. It's like uh, come, I'll wham, 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 try the so fasting is the big deal now, right? You know? Fasting, fasting is really yeah. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but um, I have. I have. The, I actually switched to uh, pescatarian two months ago. I that, never. And I'm what's pescatarian? I, fish or something? Veget vegetarian plus fish. Oh, oh, you switched. Oh, you and, did that. And I've. I, and let me tell you what. It was really kind of out of the blue because as a guy who works out, I eat meat. I, I yeah, right. Five, you need the I used protein. to eat five meals a day. I eat chicken yeah. twice a day. Wow. And all of a sudden, one day, I just said, you know what? I've seen so many movies about <laughs> people switching. Now, granted, most of the people that had these dramatic changes were in pretty bad shape beforehand. Yeah. They right. did not. They were, they were significantly over. You know, they had a lot of comorbidities. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, thank goodness. But I said, you know what? Let me switch. And I got to be honest with you. My workouts, I have more energy for my really? workouts. With I don't fish. know why. I, 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 vegetables and fish. I just cut and out no meat. Carbs, I, no carbs? Or? No, no, no. I eat, of course I eat carbs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I, okay. just cut, I just cut out meat. I don't eat any meat. Wow. I have so much more energy for my workouts. Wow. I, um, for some reason, I don't feel compelled to eat first thing in the morning. So, like, I'll naturally, like, do a um, intermittent fast because I don't eat till I get back from the gym. So I'll eat, you know, so, okay, the or yeah. Like that. Well, that's the, there's so a, the like science the, behind the fasting is pretty convincing, right? So it, I try it, it a is. little. I do like a twelve hour, right? It's hard to naturally. not eat. 
But yeah, I can do it. Like if I, I – right now, I'm going to – you know, I go to bed and – um, I can like it's around twelve. I I can not eat until twelve tomorrow. No problem. I just drink coffee. Yeah, I'm, I don't right. eat breakfast. I never did. So it's right. like that's a twelve hour fast. That's a twelve hour fast. Yeah, yeah right. And Which is not, no, not you're hard sleeping to do. most of it, right? So it's yeah, not hard to again, do. Again, I'm not a fanatic so. about any of this. The, yeah. I could not switch. I uh, I eat a lot of bad stuff. It's just I love cookies. Okay, so yeah. I don't. Yeah, know but if that's I could, that, yeah, but that's not meat. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I eat, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm, I love sweets, right? Uh, I, but I, I moderate it. But again, I, I can't imagine myself just going on some sort of strict diet. I would just be miserable. Well, I, I eat sweets once in a while. Not well, a lot. I, I eat, I, yeah. every time, well, I drink my Coca Cola, little. Bit. Yeah. I don't, yeah. you know, drink a whole bottle of it, right? That, that. That's a thing. I can moderate everything. I have the right. discipline to do that. So I can have fun with food, but doing what you did, I, I boy, that would be tough. It, it hasn't been. I thought it would be, and it yeah, hasn't been. I have, that's good. So I, have good vegan, I have vegan protein powder, so I get all my protein. You know, I'm not having as much protein, but I'm, th- my, I don't seem to need as much. I'm fine. And, uh, you know, I just eat fruits and vegetables. Good for you. And I eat. You know, That's I eat great. rice and yeah, but it was, I, I couldn't believe I did it because I'm not that guy. And all of a sudden I just, and now you're and I, that it's guy. Still, well, it's an experiment. I don't, okay. I, just, I said, let me try it as an experiment. Yeah, so the exper- experiment, I am going right? to, I am going to have ribs on my birthday. I mean, oh yeah. That's the only thing I kind of miss. I love Got to have those ribs. Love that. But you know, living in Japan, you are surrounded by a very healthy yeah. eating culture. So I get a lot of fish, right? Yeah. You know, the, the, by the way, the the sushi and sashimi here, like I can't I can't amazing. imagine. How good uh, it is. It, yeah, in America you can get the equivalent, but you have to pay like a ton. You it's just go to the, the cheap sushi shop, right? The we call them kuru kuru sushi, kaiten sushi. These it's delicious. It's like a buck a shot. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Living here is I have. You know, just out of, uh, by default, I've had a lot of, you know, drink green tea every day, just stuff like that. I think by osmosis, I was got exposed to a better diet, right? Yeah. So yeah, I would imagine. And the, and the portions are small and it's just, uh, I, so I oh, lost the portions it. are so much oh, yeah. more. <laughs> portions here are off the. We used to portions. go to these three week vacations in America. My wife would gain like five pounds. Just oh, it's a just food portions are massive here. Yeah. Here's your plate. It's like <laughs> portions are. Here. I I visited my wife was from the UK and I I went to visit her one her. Oh, her she's mom. UK. Yeah, she's, she's, she's British. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. and I and uh, I went to visit her mom. This is like back in '93, and uh, she made like a salmon salad and she puts it on the table in front of me. And uh, and I was waiting, and and I think my wife said, "No, you can start eating." So I start eating, and everybody, the whole place goes silent, and they're all looking at me, and I'm like, oh, "What did I do wrong?" And she says, "Craig, that's everybody's salad, <laughs> not." Your. I'm like, "Oh, because oh it looked like a normal, this looks like a normal portion for me, right?" And she was like, "Oh, oh my okay. god." Yeah, well, that I don't know, but anyway. Was it embarrassing? Or, you know, I was no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just apologize and That's I just funny. said, I, I just apologize. I said, "Well, here, guys, have some." They were like, "No, no, no, no. <laughs> not after I've been eating out of the bowl." Um, you, thought, you thought it was a cheesecake factory or something, right? I, 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 yeah, I just thought it was my bowl, my salad, my salmon salad, which I was happily oh, that, eating. Oh my god, that's funny. Yeah, well, that's just an illustration of the difference <laughs> in portion sizes, you know. <laughs> Uh, hey man, just a couple more questions. What sure. uh, most important lesson life has taught you, and how have you applied this lesson to yourself, to your life? Yeah. So I think the theme of this sort of conversation is you make plans, and then stuff happens, right? Yeah. That's that's been my life, right? So I was gonna I'm going to college, and then I'm gonna study teaching English and then, oh, I'm in a band. Okay. So now, okay, well, that wasn't what I expected. And then I'm doing a band. Okay. Now I'm in, oh, the band's over. Okay. Oh, I'm going to law school. You know, it's like, and now I'm going to be a lawyer. It just, just stuff. And then now I'm in Japan. It's like, what? And now I'm going to go to the Philippines. That was, you know, it's like, 
<laughs> so be open. Being yeah, open be, to, uh, but yeah, yeah. Because, of course, because it might if you're going to be really disappointed if I just know I don't know some. It's amazing some people go okay. Here's my five year plan. And I just never was a guy. I yeah, was sort of either. I roll with the punches. I've been able to do that, and I've had you know I've had some good times and bad times, but you know, uh, just being open to changing course, right? It, it for me that was important. I, some people are very disciplined and able to execute on a plan. I was never that guy. Or I, I would have a plan like, okay, go. I'm going to go to law school, and I did that three years, and then I'm going to be able. But I got diverted after that, right? So I would have these short term plans, but you know, I here I am, right? That yeah. Wasn't, so I'm just saying. Well, stuff happens. Too. Yeah, stuff happens exactly, and yeah. accept it and work with it, and it can be a really good uh, experience if you if you allow it to be right. So I guess that's um, something I've learned in my old age. <laughs> Tell me, last question, Peter. Tell me the biggest okay. change in your personality over the last ten years, and has that change mm -hmm. been? intentional or just a, fa a product of aging? Yeah, so I guess um, because you literally are more mature and you become more mature and not thinking like a selfish kid all the time. But again, I don't know. I just read somewhere men don't mature until they're 45 or something. I'm, somebody said that. I, I think that's true. Anyway, I'm still not there. I feel like I'm a work in progress, but uh, so I guess calmer, um, more, and hopefully more considerate of other people's feelings. Um, I hope, I think, I've, I'm getting better at that. I, I was really, you know, I was a selfish kid for a while, um, and I hope I've. So I guess it's about maturity, and not always thinking about yourself, that kind of thing. Cool. All right, man. So tell me about uh, Live from Mabuhai, Vinyl Day, April 22nd. Talk about the, the record. Okay. So, in like, what, what is, what's it like? What's it about? What, what do you mean? No, in terms of, like, what, I don't know, what kind of memories does it evoke for you? Uh, what, what is, you know, like, what made you guys all of a sudden put out a, a, a release a live concert recording? Okay, so, it happened because uh, there was, I forget his name right now, the, the, a guy was recording a lot of bands live in Mabuhai, a lot of bands, like, um, Oh, do you think the mutants, the Avengers? Uh, and, um, I can't think of the names right now. It's, but a lot of bands played there. A lot of famous bands. I think the Talking Heads played there. But he was so this guy was recording live shows. He recorded three of ours. I didn't know this, but I'd seen it on YouTube. He he released it on YouTube. All of this stuff is on YouTube, by the way. Oh There's my three, God! Yeah, it's all there. It's sort of like, why are you even doing a record? Because it's there. It's already there. It's already been released in a way. But um, so, and he he had these original tapes. And then this, um, I'm not sure exactly who got got things moving, but this Liberation Hall, which is the label for the, they got in touch. Or I think he shopped around these tapes and found that okay. record label to do it. And and so I got contacted by email once by the label, Ar a guy named Arnie, and he said, uh, "We we we're thinking about putting this out. What would you do? What would you would you like be interested?" And he didn't even have Frank or DeBoer's contact information, so I got them that. And so that's when the ball started rolling. As far as the performance, it it really, I remember hearing that and thinking, "My God, it's really the." the element it's the roots of what we were doing and sort of um our concept of it and i remember uh, my guitar is it, it's just no pedals nothing it's just straight into my twin it's just a a, a strat in a twin because my thing right at that time was buddy holly right I, buddy holly is a guy 
watching him, the Buddy Holly story movie came out. I don't know if you ever saw it. Years but, ago. Okay, yeah, yeah this is well, years ago. But that's what kind of got me on this. I watched him playing a Strat live, right? Uh, they actually played in the in the movie live too. But it's Buddy Holly, and he's got this Strat, and it's like, well, he's just plugged into an amp and he's playing. And so that was sort of listening back to that. I just realized how what my thinking was at the time. I just want this sort of pure, clean, elemental sound. And, and then trying to push it into a more modern um, vibe or something. So it was taking those roots and then kind of pushing it a little but with no effects because I didn't have any, I didn't think about it, right? It was sure. purity. So that's what I hear is, is that sort of beginning sound that evolved a lot af later after we made a record. So it's really pure. And, and the songs are there, right? Um, a lot of those songs go right onto the album. I think six of them went into the album, right? So yeah. we, our, the songwriting was working, right? So it's this point where we're figuring out how to make songs, what's our sound, and um, where are we going to go from here? So it really takes me back to those beginning, um, the ideas of, you know, and, and putting it together with the other elements of the band. That was... I could hear all of that and, you know, what I was thinking. And then I, rem I remembered what I was thinking at the time, how this is sounding or how I'd like it to sound. Yeah. That's cool. But it's they, really, go back in that. It primitive. It's the primitive. It, it's at our most primitive, you know, we're, yeah. we're not that good. Yeah. You know, honestly, I don't know. It, it's, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. Well, well it's just early good. in your career, but it's it's just yeah. early in your career. Yeah, I, I was surprised it didn't that. have. Yeah. yeah, right. I was surprised that 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 Never Say Never wasn't on. They didn't. I was surprised they released a record without Never Say Never. They want a, this. They want they want to capture this moment. It's a it's really a historical document. It's really a document, right? Of Yes. This is what these bands in this time were doing at this club. This right. is how they sounded. And so right. there's something admirable about that in a way. It's like, no, oh, yes. Yeah. It's just, this is it. Whatever. Right. And so I kind of, that's, I kind of like that idea. There's no yeah. trickery. There's no, you know, it's really just right off the, right off the stage. This is what yep. you heard. So as, a, as kind of a documentary, I, I like that. But, you know, we were not, you know, it's a snapshot. Not, of yeah, it's a snapshot of the very yeah. beginning of the band. So That's there's a cool. good and bad to that. But it's, you know, it's. <laughs> I hear we, we got better. Let me put it that way. <laughs> oh yeah, of course you sure did, man. <laughs> so I would encourage everybody to check out the record. It's live from Mabuhai Gardens. Mabuhai is spelled M-A-B-U-H-A-Y, Mabuhai yep. Gardens. It'll be, there's a, if you, there's a special vinyl coming out on, uh, what is it, Vinyl Day on April 22nd? April 22nd, yeah, I think, yeah. And, of course, it's available on all the streaming services. Um, man, I really enjoyed talking to you. It was cool. Yeah, when I great. Whenever I, Whenever I get to talk with someone that's already moved me musically, it's a nice little, it's like a well, gift. Well, thank you. Me. I really so, appreciate your... Um you know, in liking what we did. Oh yeah. You, I, was, you, you, I, I, you never when, get, when, it's like, I don't take it for granted when somebody likes what you do. It's not like, Oh, whatever. You know, I, you know, it really means something to, oh, good. to everybody. Good. Right. It, well, it meant something to me, the music. Well, thank you. So well, when, yeah. when I got the email, I'm like, uh, cause I get, and I'm not saying this in an arrogant way. I get but, pitched like five, six times a day and everybody wow. usually gets de wow. deleted and um but i got this i'm like oh shit and i just went and pulled out the record you know I'm like, i love yeah i love this I, band really, i'm like i'm amazed holy shit to find man, a it fan really just took me there. way back no wow I, that's I so great that. i really it was really cool. i really appreciate that yeah well it, thank you i really appreciate yeah, that. you know i don't take it for granted you know i it's nice when somebody you know, enjoys what you do, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, been, it, I've been out of this for so long, so I haven't done an interview in decades. So this Well, you is, passed with flying colors. You did well, great. thank you. <laughs> this is great. This is just, you know, shooting well, the cool. stuff. Yeah, man. Just having a good time. Great. Thank you. This is really great. I really enjoyed this.
Good. I'm really happy. Thank you very much. And I don't take that for granted. So thanks very much. Great. Hold on a second, uh, and I'll wrap up with you. Let me just say goodbye to everybody. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share it on your social media channels. We appreciate your support. Uh, thanks very much to Peter Woods for all the year, all the great music, and uh, for his time and coming out. And we wish the the remaining members of the band the best of luck with the new release live at uh, live from Abuhe Gardens. And most important, remember that happiness is a choice. So choose wisely. Be nice, go play a guitar, and have fun. Till next time, peace and love, everybody. I am out. Bye-bye.